G'day guys and welcome back to another video. Today is a day, that time of the month again, where we get to update our Nexus devices to the latest and greatest of what Android has to offer. In this case, it's the NBD90X, just released today uh, on October. So this month's security update, and I'll be showing you how to update your rooted Nexus 6P from the NRD90U here. If we just go ahead, go onto our device, you can see we're rooted here, and we're, we are indeed on the NRD90U. So without further ado, let's continue. So this, uh, this month we're going to be using Fastboot again just because we need to update the bootloader as well. Uh, the radio is indeed the same as the NRD90U so we won't be needing to touch that but we're going to need to upload the bootloader. So right now I'm rooted as you can see and you're going to need to download of course a few files here and we'll get started right away. So we want to head over to our computer now by just clickety click and one of the first things you want to download of course is the factory image. Now you can go to this uh, site here on developers.google.com I'm going to click on acknowledge and then you want to scroll down or you can click on angler on the right hand side here to get to our thing and we're going to click on the blue link here that's downloaded for the N NVD90X so you want to uh, download that and all I'm going to do is save everything into a folder called Android just like that all three files in there so what we're going to do next is of course head over to uh, the Super SU download page so we can download the latest one in this case it's the SR1 2.78 of course and we're also going to need the platform tools or Android tools here that'll be available at my basket build link so you can just download that with either button and of course you're going to end up with these three files right here so now we can continue I'm going to assume that you've already installed your drivers uh, of course to even root you got to do that and we're going to start now. So what we're going to do is extract our Android tools. You can see there are four files here. Let's make this more visible. We're just going to extract all three of them. Although we, yeah, we're just going to extract all four of them, sorry. And what we're going to do next is open up our factory image here. We're going to open up this Angular folder. And we're going to extract, of course, the bootloader. And if you need to update the radio, you might as well, even though there is no update. We're going to extract that as well. And then we're going to open up this image angler nbd uh, 90x zip file here. It's going to open it. So it's going to extract it to a temporary folder and then open it up. So once that is open, what we need to do is extract these few images. We're going to need the boot image, we're going to need the system image, and we're going to need the vendor image. Just those three. I'm going to drag those out. Now the system one is going to take the longest, so we're going to do something else in the meantime. So we're going to have to go to our device and we're going to need to enable the file transfer mode. So we're going to scroll down here from the notification bar and then we're going to tap on USB charging this device to transferring files. And you can see that it's uh, already completed so or extracting those images. So you can see our Nexus 6P folder would have come up with our internal shared storage. So you're going to open that up and then you want to copy the SuperSU zip to that file to your device pretty much. So you can copy it or you can just drag it into an empty space. Make sure it's not on top of a folder but rather in an empty space here where it says copy to root of storage. Now that you'll find it at the bottom once it's copied and we're going to leave it there. So we can close that now and we can get on with the flashing process. So what you're going to do with your phone is of course reboot it into the bootloader. So to do that we're going to turn our device off. It's going to power it off just like that. And I also like to disconnect the USB cable so it doesn't uh, boot back into this, into that battery display. And we're going to hold the power button and volume down button at the same time until we get into the bootloader. Now don't worry if it changes up there, that's fine. It's going to replug it back into our computer like so. Make sure that connection is quite secure. And once you've done that, we just need to head over back to the computer. And of course we can close this and we can close the uh, zip file, on the WinRAR windows. And what we're going to do is hold shift and right click on an empty space, or at least bring up wherever the directory is for your ADB and Fastboot EXEs. So first off, we're going to check that our device is connected properly. So we're going to type in Fastboot devices, just like that. And our serial number should return, when, and which it did. 
Now I'm just going to make this a little bit easier to do. So we're going to have all our files there and over here. And what we're going to do now is, of course, we're going to flash the new bootloader image. So we're going to type in fastboot flash bootloader. Leave a space on the end and you're going to drag in the bootloader image and then hit enter. Now someone else told me that you could type in the first letter of the name, so like boot or something like that. Press tab and it'll take you to the first result, and which we'll try that soon. So we're going to type in, we're going to have to reboot our device back into the bootloader. And we're going to, so that we're going to do that by typing in fastboot reboot dash bootloader. Just like so. And as you can see our device will be turning back itself or itself back on into the bootloader. Once it's in, we're going to flash the radio image just in case. Uh, we haven't updated that for a little bit, although it is the same as last month's. So we're going to type in fastboot flash radio. And then on the second here, we're going to type in radio and then hit tab. And you can see it brings up the image here. Now this works if all your files or where your command prompt is changed, like in the directory is set to, uh, is the same as where your files are. This is the only way it will work. But if it's in like a different folder or something, you're going to want to drag it in or type in the full path. So yeah, you can, so you can just do this tab method or you can just drag in the file that you want to flash. So we're going to hit enter and that would work as well. We're going to flash the radio. And we're going to reboot back into the bootloader one more time. So we can hit the up arrow key on our keyboard two times to get back two previous commands. And we're going to hit enter to reboot back into the bootloader. Now in this case, we're going to flash three images now and do some formatting, especially the cache. So we're going to start by flashing the boot image. So we can type in fast boot, flash boot. Of course, you can type in boot and press tab, or you can just drag in the boot image. There we are. And we're going to format the cache. So we're going to type in fast boot format cache. Just like that, hit enter. And then we're going to flash the system image. So we'll type in fast boot flash system. Leave a space on the end and drag in our system image. Hit enter. Now this will take a while since it's a uh, two and a half gigabytes, especially to transfer and flash over. This shouldn't take more than a minute a minute and a little bit, so please bear with me while we wait for this to flash. So we're almost done here, we're just writing the last of the system and it took a minute and a half pretty much, 95 seconds. So last thing we're going to flash is the vendor image. So we're going to type in fastboot, oops, select your command prompt window and type in fastboot flash vendor. Leave a space in the end and drag in our vendor image, hit enter. Now this is not as big as the um, system image but it still takes a little bit longer to flash, 7 seconds. Now there we go. We're going to immediately boot into TWRP so the stock boot image doesn't overwrite the recovery with its uh, its own recovery, the stock one. So we're going to type in, oh sorry, we're going to select recovery mode here and we're going to hit enter. Now that'll reboot our device into TWRP. Hopefully you've got it all there. Uh, if you're upgrading for Marshmallow, you will need to flash TWRP 3.0.2-2, which is the one that supports NuGuR. So we're going to wait for this to boot into TWRP. We're going to flash SuperSU. And well, there we are. So we're going to flash SuperSU now. We're going to have to decrypt our data partition to do that. That is just your lock screen password or anything like that that is similar. Now I'm going to have to adjust the brightness here so you can actually see what's going on. Uh, there we go. So we're going to tap on install and we're going to go up a level. So just go to your SD card up there and scroll all the way down and we should see our SuperSU zip that we copied over. I'm going to swipe to confirm the flash. Now this will flash the systemless uh, SuperSU and we'll do all that stuff with the boot image and install itself. This shouldn't take too long and of course the usual thing is that the reboot will take a little bit longer than expected. It will seem like it's in a boot loop for a little bit but uh, it says don't interrupt the process. So once this is done and of course you can probably flash anything else that you like to do such as uh, Viper for Android or even uh, your custom kernel, uh, you can flash it here or actually before. 
So um, we're going to hit Reboot System now. And we are going to skip or fast forward this until our device fully turns on. You probably know that we're going to have to enter our pattern a little bit to turn on our device a few times here. So I'll be back when our device fully turns on. So we're booted back up and everything looks the same so no data has been lost and we're going to check the root checker app because it gives us all the details anyway. There we go, we are rooted and um, the prompt didn't come back up because we're already rooted and all that so it remembers uh, what you gave root access to which is great. Not that I remember the last time, I don't think that happened but it's probably because I didn't download the root checker app previously beforehand. So as you can see we're rooted here and we are of course on the NBD90X here and I think that is all I need to say or show. Maybe you are still skeptical, I don't know why you would be, but if we go to about phone it's here as well, the NBD90X and I don't have any other apps on this because I plan to go on a custom ROM right after, but there we are. Thank you so much for watching. Now this has been a relatively quick and or video about this if you have any questions feel free to leave it down below and if you have any suggestions i do have a few like lined up already uh, also feel free to leave it down below as well and i'll see what i can do about it so thank you very much for watching and i'll talk to you all in the next one